This old OnePlus 8T, that's also pretty destroyed, runs a full Monero node. You can use this as a remote node to connect to. And now other devices of yours don't have to store the full Monero blockchain. Today we are going through the full setup. Some disclaimers before we start. Running a node will constantly read and write from storage. This can affect its lifespan. A solution for this would be to use a phone that offers an SD card slot, because you can store the blockchain there. Also, of course, when running and keeping a node up to date, your device will use more power than just idling. While not necessary to constantly stay plugged in, you'll need to top it up from time to time in order to keep it going. Last but not least, the Monero blockchain is ever growing. We will work with a Prune blockchain today, so at the time of writing this video, that's about 65 GB, but only growing. Keep that in mind if you want to keep your node for longer amounts of time. Again, an older phone with an SD card slot is the perfect solution for this. Let's get to the node. There is the long, safe and right way to do it. And then there are kind people out there who wrote scripts that coding noobs like me can use to make their lives easier. We are trying the easy mode today. I'm talking about Android Thermox Monero Node, a script by Nahu, originally forked from Cryptogrampy, but Nahu's version seems to be more up to date. I'll link the githubs below. And I have to put another disclaimer, you should never just run any scripts from GitHub without doing some research. I'll link a readable version of the script below that you can and should verify. Also it's interesting, because even as non-coder, you can see how much work the script actually does for us, from creating macros, binding and restricting ports in a way so that you can safely open them, and most importantly almost pruning the blockchain for us. The script will also ask you if you want to use your SD card if you have one, which you should. But now enough disclaimers. We need a few apps so that we can emulate Linux on our Android device. I learned that the Termux versions on Google Play are not necessarily up to date. So it's best to use Afdroid, which is basically an alternative app store for interesting tools. I'm getting it from their official website and installing from APK. It might be that you have to allow that first. In Fdroid, we'll grab a few things. Termux, Termux widget, Termux API, and Termux boot. On the latter, I got a warning from Android because it can change boot options, which we of course ignore. Next, we have to give some permissions and get rid of battery optimizations for those apps. Easiest would be to search it in your settings as every Android distribution is slightly different. Then we need to allow Thermux to draw over other apps. I found that in special app access, in my case. Now we turn to Thermux itself, which is our emulator, and we have to issue a few commands. I will put everything in the description for you for easier copy and paste. If it's your first time running Thermux, it always makes sense to update things. So we run apt update and apt upgrade. A quick note here. If you're running into problems like I did first, say Termux having issues with the network, uh, finding things in repositories, try the following command, Termux change repo. I needed to change the repositories and then things worked. After it has updated everything, it was less than a few minutes on my end, we come to the script itself. I won't say the whole thing out loud, but we let it do its magic and follow the prompts. And that was pretty fast again and saved us tons of work. The node is already starting to sync in the background and you can always check it by pulling down your notifications. The script itself gives us good pointers on what to do next and there is more that we can do to make use of our node. So let's go over some things. In order for Termux and our node to start up together with our phone, we have to open Termux boot once, that's it. For it to run in the background or foreground, you have to stop and restart it through the widget. Done. A quick personal wish here and an improvement I found. If the widget would also work the same way as the notification to show the status or adding an optional widget it would be great. It would also be easier to record for you. Otherwise, I'm stoked at how easy this initial setup was. 
Figuring out the startup problems of Termux with the repositories took longer than setting up the node. And I found a solution for the notification widget thing, and it's literally called notification widget. <laughs> There's an app for everything, I guess, and this is what you are seeing now. But on to proper settings. We want to make sure that any other devices we want, be it a wallet or mining rig, can connect to our node, making it into a proper remote node. Of course, this will only properly work after the synchronization is finished, but we can already get started on all of those things. First, we want our Android device to have a fixed IP. We do this in the Wi-Fi settings by clicking on your actual network, and then we change DHCP to static. In our own network, this is already enough to use the node. You can see your local IP in the notification. If you have a wallet in the same network, you can try it out now by connecting to your device IP and port. For connecting from the outside, we have to do more. The next part is never fun, but needed for nodes. I don't like it because it will look different for each and every one of you. We need to forward ports with our router. Best trick here, honestly, is to Google port forwarding and your router and provide a name. In my case, it's a bad web UI and forwarding can either be called forwarding from external to internal or public to private port, depending on your router. But basically what you want is to forward the outside to the inside on the same ports. Also, depending on which ports you use, your node can act in different ways. There are three ports as well as the settings that we, or rather the script, gave on setups that influence them. So in my example, I want to make a remote node that I can use from outside my home network. At the same time, I want to support the XMR network by letting other people synchronize from my node. To achieve that, we need to forward port 18080 for P2P seeding. That means other people can synchronize their nodes from ours and port 18089 will be used to actually send and receive transactions. It's set up as restricted port by the script we used before. The creators recommend not to use the 18081 port. You could do that, but only if you set some parameters before in the setup process, which we didn't. So we leave this one. Again, to repeat, I forwarded 18080 and 18089 respectively on my router. First for sharing the blockchain with others, the second for remote connecting and actual sending and receiving of transactions or mining or a P2Pool instance or whatever you might need a Monero node for. With the ports forwarded, it's now possible to connect to your node from anywhere as long as it's synced. For that, we need to find out the public facing IP of the device itself. Again, a foolproof way to do that is to type my public IP into a search engine on that device. And from then on, the address of your node is your device IP and port 18089. <laughs> Congratulations. In between, I kept checking in on the download. Thankfully, the script is working with a pruned blockchain. I realized only a few minutes in that you have to manually refresh to see your sync status. I thought it was stuck there. After 50%, it will slow down significantly and the last 10% will be pain. It took a few days for me. But be sure that the wake lock of Termux is active so the node does not get shut down on you randomly. If you want to change anything with your node, the config file is stored on the device itself. If you want to stay in Linux, you can go back to Termux and take a look at the contents of a directory with the ls command. Then enter with cd, then again ls to see what's there. Or of course, easier, find the config text file through the file manager on your phone. I was thinking of making my note available for my European watchers, but I'm not sure yet if it will stay on the phone I used for this video, as this one does not have an SD card slot. Another solution of course would be to add an SSD via an USB-C cable, but then you have to think about charging. Maybe an adapter for both or a phone with wireless charging? There are some possibilities as you see. But easiest and cheapest, again, would honestly just be to use an older phone with an SD card slot. 
if the card fails from all the reading and writing, you simply replace it with no harm done to the phone. Initial download might be a bit slower than today, but you are safer for the long run then. That's it, a remote Monero node on an Android smartphone. Set up in only a few minutes and then synced for less than a week, maybe slower, depending on your saving media. Then with just some settings, you can make your node available to the public or just keep it within your network for yourself. Big shout out to Nahoo and CryptoGrampy for making it so easy to reproduce. I think this is probably the cheapest way to get a Monero node running. Of course, only if you don't get a phone just for doing that. Same as I would not get a mini PC or a server just for a Monero node. It's more about utilizing what you already have. Of course, if your storage server is connected 24 seven anyway, or you have a mini PC as media center with some space left, those make sense as well if you already have them. But today was probably also the fastest way to set it up I have found this far, as the script really took over a lot of setup work for us, like pruning the blockchain, setting ports correctly, also blacklisting known exploiters. So big kudos to the creators. That won't be the last mobile node I set up. This is honestly a great tool. That's it. This channel deals with everything technology and crypto. If that interests you, please leave us a sub. I wish all the best to each and every one of you. Happy mining and bye.